Good morning all, new printed circuit boards from JLC PCB. Uh, let's see what we've got in here. And these boards are for a new project. Oh, there's a there's a JLC PCB mm, keyring, I guess that is. Yeah, these are for a new project. Well, it's not that new. In fact, it's actually very old. 1974. Yes, this is uh, a project which I first saw as a teenager. My mum's friend, Rosemary, her son, Mark, he built this. And I went round his house and uh, saw this thing. And it was all built on sort of a wooden frame with hardboard and slide switches. I mean, it was absolutely beautiful. So what is it? Well, it's Pong. And this is the sync gen of all the sync signal generator for the telly tennis game. So let's have a closer look at this board. So we have two potentiometers here. That's to adjust the line sync and the field sync uh, frequencies. This is a dual 555 timer. So it's a 556 and it's pretty much one on each side. So line sync on one side, field sync on the other. I can't quite remember which way around it is. This is a 74LS00, so it's a quad two input NAND gate. Um, a few resistors dotted about, a couple of capacitors for timing. Hmm, should I put them that close to each other? I'm not sure it'll make that much difference. Um, this is the video input, uh, and this is the main video output. So this is one of my eight um, pin pads in which I'll put one of my daughter boards for an RCA socket and that'll go off to the uh, monitor. This is where the video signals from the various elements of the system will come in. I've just put eight on here. Uh, power input here, two pin JST. And I've put lots more two pin JSTs on this board and they're all commoned up on this uh, positive line here. Mainly to distribute five volts off to other boards which will be appearing in this system. Okay, so where's this board going to go? Well, it's gonna go on here. So a few years ago, and you may have seen this before in previous videos, I had this uh, front panel punched out. So it's got holes for the pots at one inch spacings, and below it's got a row of holes for switches, toggle switches, that's to switch in and out the various line elements. I went for this color knob because uh, green on black is the color of the image that appears on the monitor. So this new board will sit on two of these holes. Have I got my pitch right? Yeah, it looks like I have. And uh, pots will go through the front. Now you can actually see the sink generator down here. Here are the two pots. They're on here as trimmers, a couple of 555s. Well, I've combined those into the single chip 556. And there's the 74LS00 resistors and capacitors. So that's the sink generator circuit. And the sync outputs, the field sync and the line sync, are triggers for a whole bunch of timing circuits. These are all got 555s on as well. And they just produce line elements on the screen. These four actually produce the outer four lines to make up the tennis court. This is, after all, a tele-tennis game. So what I can do is I can lift all this circuitry off, put this board on the front panel on two of the holes. I'll probably put it down here somewhere so that the video cable can come out nice and neatly. And then distribute the sync signals, which are on these two five pin pin arrays, which I'll probably go for turned pin sockets like I've done here. Distribute the sync into all the various line generating elements. So yeah, I just wanted to smarten this up by starting to produce printed circuit boards for it. So again, some time ago, I bought these on eBay and it is a full set of practical wireless from 1974 for the Tele Tennis project. So this is the one. July 74 was the first uh, part of the article. There's the Tele Tennis uh, game in a nice wooden box with slider pots to move your bats up and down. There's the ball which sort of bounces off the sides of the court until it runs out and you score. And later on, there was actually a scoring system for this with on-screen graphics. And that's the bit that really interests me. But yeah, these are some uh, practical wireless. It's an odd choice to put it in practical wireless, but uh, there it is. 
the first five uh, consecutive issues for this project. Um, this is essentially the circuit uh, that's on my PCB. Where's my PCB there? It's a couple of 555s. As I say, I've done a 556 implementation. There's the field sync generator. There's the line sync generator. That's the sync mixer. And then in a previous magazine, you've got the, uh, the sync uh, and video mixer circuitry that goes to the final output. Um, this article by Mr. M. Hughes. Mr. Hughes actually um, left a comment on one of my videos a while back when I uh, was doing a rebuild of this when I built uh, some of the circuitry, which was fantastic. Uh, I really appreciated that, uh, a message from the uh, original author of this project. So the final composite video output on this thing is on uh, an RCA phono socket. And of course I can use this same daughter board, which I've been using uh, extensively on the Vocoda project. And that plugs in there. And the holes in this board are sufficiently small that that's a really nice tight fit. So it'll work even without soldering it. I will eventually solder it, but initially probably I won't. But yeah, that fits absolutely perfectly. And I've just noticed that I have used exactly the same clearances front and side. That's an absolutely perfect fit. My um, video inputs will be across there. Capacitor here, uh, which is part of the final output circuit for the composite video. That looks wonderful. So I'm going to make one of these up now. And uh, I probably won't show that in this video because I'll do that as a soldering with Julian video. Um, but I'll come back in this video when that's all built and we'll power it up and we'll see if it works. So that's mostly done. Uh, just need to fit the two potentiometers, but I didn't have them. So I've had to wait a couple of days, but in here. So yeah, I bought these from a, a UK seller. Yeah, you pay a little bit more, but then uh, you don't have to wait. They turn up quickly. Uh, so I've got a 10K here and a 220K. The article actually says 250K, but you can't get 250Ks. Break off the little uh, securing lugs. Right, R1 is 250K. That's that one, 220K. And R2, which doesn't have a lug. And it's actually a slightly different model. And these don't have um, the plastic dust covers on the rear. Interesting. And I was thinking of a way to not have the problem where when I knock these accidentally it bends the legs once they're soldered in and weakens the metal. I've been thinking if I run UV glue uh, over these the bottoms of these connections this should rigidize that but I don't want it to climb up so far and I don't think it will that it might get on the uh, carbon track. It was a bit tricky getting the first leg of this soldered in while I hold it with my little finger, try and apply some solder on there. Let's do the other two legs, centre leg. Now, have any, any of these grounded? I don't think they are because they're in a classic 555 A stable timer circuit. And uh, R2 10K linear, okay. And uh, there it is, finished. Ready to test. Now, just a quick. Uh, thing. The 250k, 220k has the 100 n so that's going to be the very low speed 50 hertz oscillator. So that's field sync and the 10k is line sync, that's the 15.625 kilohertz. Stand by for the squeal. Just need to swap the uh, wires over on this two pin JST because for some reason it's got uh, pin 1 is negative and my standard now is pin 1 is positive. So is this going to work? Let's uh, switch on the green screen CRT. The heater uh, cathode will take a while to warm up, of course. Power this thing on and just see if we can get... I'll turn the brightness up. Ooh, that looks a bit out of sync. Um, can we get it to sync up? It's probably way off on the field frequency. Now, interestingly, that's right up one end of the pot. I'll try and get a different uh, display view. So this is interesting. I can't, with the field sync, get it to sync to the 50 hertz. 
I mean, that's clearly got three sections of video there. That's got two. That's not syncing. And it actually won't sync even if I go fully counterclockwise. And with line sync, I've got a similar problem. I just can't, I think that's very close, but I can't even fully counterclockwise sync this monitor in. Now there are adjustments on the back of this monitor for field and line sync. I think one of them's a pot and the other one I think is a variable inductor. It feels quite graunchy. But I set this thing up to work with this. And one would imagine that the uh, sync generator in here on this little tiny mini Z80 computer would be perfectly timed with a 12 meg crystal to um, be accurate timing. So this monitor has been set up for this, but it won't work with this. Even you, we need to go beyond the range of these pots. So yeah, it's a bit of a problem here. So I will readjust this around the back to try and bring these in. Um, that's the line sync, clearly. That's brought in. And can I get the field sync? Yeah. And that's the field sync. So that's synced up nicely. Um, there's a bit of strobing on the camera here, but it's not on the monitor in real life. I think that's synced up. We're not getting the full screen height though, are we? Maybe we need to look at some frequencies on this. If I tweak these pots, you can clearly see that the line sync goes out. When I take that one off its counterclockwise position, and here you can see that the, the frame sync or field sync holds for quite a while. And then that's lost if I bring this pot up. So what it looks like to me, because the pots have a series resistor sitting next to them, is that the value of that resistor needs to be reduced. So I could bring the 100K down to say 47K, bring this 22K down to, I don't know, 10K or something. I might try that. So I thought the only way I'd know what was going on was to measure some frequencies. So I'm looking at the field sync, which is this part here, and I've got 64 hertz. And I know the batteries are okay because we've got 5.3, about 5.3 volts. Let's just push those in. Yeah, 5.3 volts on those, so that's fine. And if I turn that up, this loses sync, but we're up at 87 hertz, 90, 100. And so the range of these pots just doesn't seem to be quite right because the lowest I can get that is 64 hertz. Now let's switch across to the uh, line sync output, which should be 15.625 kilohertz. Let's bring that up. And we've got 16.48 kilohertz. And again, if I turn the pot, all I can do is raise that frequency to 20 kilohertz, 22 kilohertz. So the ranges on these pots, well, they're all wrong, aren't they? So to slow these oscillators down, I need to increase these resistances, uh, not decrease them. So I'm going to have to take them out with the solder sucker and uh, actually put larger value resistors in there. So this is going to be slightly tricky. Let's try solder sucking these holes. So with 220K instead of 100K for the field sync, I can get it down to, well, just above 50 hertz, 50.4, but I've got plenty of range above that. I still can't get it down to 50 hertz, so I might get to 330K for that. Let's switch it over onto um, line sync, and that is 9 kilohertz. Ah, now that's meant to be 15 kilohertz. Oh, that's slowed down far too much. So I need to change that resistor. I'm going to change both these resistors. Okay, with 330K there, I can go down to 41 hertz and up to 67 hertz. So that's perfect. That gives me a range either side with about 50 hertz in about the middle. So I'm actually going to tweak the frame sync on this monitor. Uh, is that line sync? No, that's frame sync, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's looking on quite nicely there. Okay, now let's go to line sync, which is over here. And there I'm going from 19 kilohertz down to 14. So that resistor is probably not quite right, but I can get 15.6, which is there. 
Oh yeah, that looks much better. We've got the full height of the screen and the full width. So that's now properly synced. Right, I finally got my resistor values, I think, because I've got 50 hertz pretty much in the middle of the range of this part. And up here, I've got, wind that up a bit, 15.6 uh, kilohertz. Yeah, slightly over the center of this one, but I've been fiddling around with this resistor value. And I've now down to the resolution of E24 uh, resistors, I think. So I can't get that one any more accurate. But that's, I can get 15.625 nice and easily uh, in the middle of the range of that pot. And on the scope, 15.6 is about there. Fixed. I'm going to solder those resistors in. Yes, I'm just not quite sure why um, these oscillators were so wildly out of spec. I mean, it's not as if... Um, 555's capacitors and resistors have changed over the last, uh, oh, what is it, 45 years? Since 1974. Anyway, I'm happy with these res resistor values now. So these can be soldered in. They were just pushed in and they look to be pretty good. So let's see how that works. Right, I didn't think that was going to take us long to get this uh, to be at the right frequency. But there's one more thing I want to do. This is actually showing no video so the brightness should be turned down a bit and I've got a couple of line generators here here are the sync generators that are on this board but I'm going to use the sync generators from this board feed them into these two line generator circuits and then feed the video outputs which are here in a diode mixer similar to the one on this board um, and try and get some line elements on this screen so finally I've connected this uh, circuit into my sync generator and I've now got a video image on the monitor there let's tip that down like that and I can adjust with these two pots the height of this uh, horizontal line and also the XY position of this vertical line so those are my video generating elements and I've connected those back into the video mixer of this board, which is this array of diodes. Yeah, that all seems to work quite well. So I think I will leave this project there for the moment. Cheerio.